Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got another contest uh, of champions I'm going to do today. This is the Hydrogen Loft in their Gamma Glow Plastic. This is the Lone Star Armadillo in their gold, uh, Glow Plastic. I think it's Bravo, but like a Glow variant of it. I'm not sure. Regardless, these actually feel and look very similar. And I suspect they glow somewhat similarly. And you'll see the profiles here are a little bit different. And maybe I'll show you guys in post, you know, a little bit more, maybe in better detail. But long story short is, these are two good discs. And I'm going to pit them against each other. Well, sort of. Since I'm a novice to recreational level thrower, I'm actually going to do a best throw round. I'll take the best live each one. But I'll basically tell you which one I'm throwing each time. You can kind of see how they, they fly. But they should have very, very similar flight numbers. But they look different like the their profile if you look pretty closely this one's a little taller and a little bit more rounded this one's a little not quite as tall but a little more flat here but according to the manufacturers they have similar or almost identical flight numbers this is supposedly a tiny bit more stable my opinion just looking at these is i suspect this is probably a little bit more glidey than the two glide that it says. This is probably about the same. This actually, in my experience, meets out pretty uh, close to the flight numbers, but I suspect this is maybe a slight bit more glidey. But long story short is, I'm gonna have a quick little nine, 10 hole round with them. I'm just going to make a custom layout here. You can kind of see how I play it. And uh, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and lead off with the loft. This will be the first time I've thrown this. Um, I just got it in the mail recently. The basket is between those trees and uh, it's about 300 plus feet away here. Most of the other holes will be shorter, but this one here I just want to start at the traditional tee pad uh, one. <clears throat> okay, novice disc golf y'all. Now let me try the Dillo. That was the hydrogen by Loft. I put a little more power on that, that's in a much better position. Also, these are the first throws of the day. Effectively, I haven't thrown since the weekend. This is, I'm filming this on a Friday. So anyways, I'm a good 120 feet out from the basket. I'm gonna throw the loft first, the hydrogen first. <laughs> I see loft on it, I just wanna say loft. Okay, I've got a putt. Now let's try the Dillo. Yes, sir, two good throws. Okay, and candidly, I also haven't putted <laughs> in a few days, so I'm gonna take a little time here, hopefully I can make this 15-footer. All right. Nice. Okay, so before I throw on this next hole, I just want to talk about the feel of these putters. Um, the loft feels a little bit more like a traditional putter. Now, it's pretty advanced in design in terms of, like, this is not a lid. Even though this has similar flight numbers to what you might expect a lid or an old school type Frisbee, this is more of a modern design. And uh, it feels more like a real putter, a modern putter of today, like an AVR or Luna or something along those lines when you're putting. Not exactly, but a lot closer. And this one here doesn't feel so much like a putting putter, but it definitely feels like an approach disc. It feels more like an approach disc, arguably, to me at least, than this. But this is more like a putting putter. But these definitely both feel within that certain range. But I would say this is just feels a little bit more like a traditional putting putter. Also great for a throwing putter. Those of you know that my primary throwing putter is an AVR uh, at this time. Uh, and that's just a putting putter. That's also a putting putter. Whereas uh, this is more of a, an approach disc style. And maybe you'd put this in the wind to minimize, you know, uh, it going uh, bad. So that's it. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw. Just so you know, we're at hole two of this layout, which is the, the old hole four. I'm starting a lot closer. This is still over 300 feet to the basket, and uh, it's a good pump. And really, if I have absolutely no mistakes, it's the only way I'm going to reach it in two for these. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and throw. Well, I'm gonna throw out the loft hydrogen first. So while that looks and maybe feels faster than the Dillo, the real world results is that is, feels about as slow as Armadillo. So now I'm gonna try the Dillo. Oh, that's sad. So far I'm 50% off the tee with these two putters. Okay, I wanna point out that indeed errors here uh, uh, made are my own. I don't blame the disc. I felt like I had a really good rip off the Dillo. I just threw it into a, a pole. <laughs> so, all right, I'm a good 100 feet out. So again, I'm going to try to approach with the disc. Okay, I actually went long of the basket there, but I did put a lot on it. I do have to put more on these than a standard putter uh, so far in my experience, but that has its advantages. Oh, I accidentally juiced that one, kind of like grip lock. Yeah, and really that's recreational disc golf or novice to recreational level disc golf. You, you just don't at this level have the level of re reproducibility and uh, consistency that you do have of a more trained and seasoned uh, player. Okay, with that said, I'm gonna try to put a putt in. I'm uh, 20 out. Ooh, uh, that was me, basically. I, my hand did that or something like that in, in the putt. I'll take it. Okay, we're now at what used to be hole five on this layout. They've essentially got the basket still there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play this as it was. I'm just having fun here. This time I'm gonna lead off with the Dillo. The last two <laughs> holes I let off with the hydrogen, I should probably take turns with the two. So I'll try to do the next two leading off with the Dillo. And all I wanna do is get it across there. The basket is over there. And so that's essentially where I'm trying to get, but I just wanna get over this uh, River OB first. I'll be honest, that's probably as good as I could have possibly expected with these putters and my level of throwing ability. Oh, I, I absolutely ripped into that. Totally did that when I threw and I felt it as soon as I was doing it. I couldn't stop myself. You know how sometimes you have a really good throw and you're like, yeah, I can do one even better. That's basically what I tried to do on the second throw. I was like, I will just absolutely rip into it. And I just didn't have the level of control needed for that. So, okay, I'm a good, this is kind of becoming a pattern. I'm a good, almost hundred feet out. So all I want to do is get a basket, uh, one of these discs close to the basket. I did the same thing, pulled it with my wrist. And that went OB. Now let's try the Dillo. There we go. Okay, awesome. So yeah, I, uh, I'm liking how these both throw. Uh, with putting, I still feel like the hydrogen seems to feel a little bit more like a regular putter for that. But I'm gonna try both and we're just gonna see what happens. Oh man, that was, that was on me. There we go. I will say it's 50 degrees right now, and both of these are a little bit slick slash slippery uh, in the hand. Um, and that's just, you know, it is what it is. You know, these are not designed to be grippy plastics. These are designed to be premium glowing plastics. So anyways, I'm gonna go to the next hole here. This is a safari hole. I'm gonna go to 20, or more out from that basket. All I want to do is get this across the street and hopefully not into that tree. Somehow that got past the tree. All right, now let's do the loft. See if maybe I can correct a little bit. No, I did the whole thing where I ripped it over with accidental Anheuser. Okay, so here I'm about 60, 
five out, I'm at the edge of circle two. So what I'm gonna do, instead of attempting to putt, and I can putt pretty far, I'm gonna just do a couple of approaches, because really that's what you're here for. That had a lot of wobble in the hand. Let me see if I can do it a little bit less wobbly. Ah, wah. Okay, so that's a little bit depressing. I'm about 50% for my throws and for my upshots. Just needs to, need to get a little more consistent with what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so next up in the Safari layout, this is the new hole four, but really the last less than half of it. I'm approximately 200 feet away, thanks to U-Disc, measuring between U-Disc where I'm at here in the basket. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these two putters here. This will be the next hole. And uh, let's just see what I can do. Gonna lead off with the hydrogen. Ah, I did the same thing. The downside about form changes is it makes filming a lot more difficult because I'm not actually, you know, throwing correctly. There we go, that's much more like it. Okay, okay, so this hydrogen was only 60 feet away from the basket, which considering how badly I screwed up that throw is admirable. But then, it in, then again, it is only a 200 foot hole. So with that said, I'll take what amounts to a birdie. Okay, we've, we have arrived at the next hole. Uh, the basket is straight ahead. I'm gonna play this hole exactly as it was designed. First up with the Dillo. Love that. All right, let's see if I can betray the 50% letdown I've had all game and get a good throw out of this. Nope. Well, the good news is I know what my average is. I'm approximately 50% <laughs> on my throws. That's really just a soft bit. I'm not trying to do much. Okay, that I tried to go in. <laughs> so even though I basically went for it, <laughs> that was only a few feet away, and this is basically under the basket, which was a deliberate attempt to get it close. <laughs> so far, the way I describe the feel of these two putters is this hydrogen feels more like a get out of jail free type disc that you can you know, it's designed to be super directional the way you do it. This is similarly directional, but it feels just a little more stable, a little bit more slower in that it's designed to go to the ground. So I would maybe trust this at this time a little bit more, you know, to hit the ground. And I would trust this a little bit more to go where you point it and then have it if you need it to not fade at all etc it's kind of what things are feeling like i don't remember which one i threw off the tee first so i'm going to throw this hydrogen ground is very slippery here so we're about to have some very comedic action i have a feeling <clears throat> nope excellent anheuser i did slightly slip there but honestly i don't my body doesn't know what it's doing anymore when it comes to throwing there we go, that felt good actually. That was a better throw. Okay, so I'm about 140 out from that uh, basket. This was actually about 20 feet further back, but in a much more advantageous position. It was basically out in the open and a 180 foot throw towards a basket with absolutely no obstructions is much easier than a 150 throw with this level of obstruction that we have here. So. I, have to, I can't throw this high into the tree. I have to throw it lowish and with a little bit of hyzer because this is not a stable boy. But let's see how this handles a little bit of hyzer and if it displays any fade. Basically flipped up, but to be fair, a putter like that will flip up if you're like me and every throw you do has a lot of wobble. It makes the disc less stable in the air, so that's why it anhyzers out. So you'll see a lot of my throws actually accidentally Anheuser because when I release it, it doesn't come out smoothly. That was actually a better throw. And because of it, it's under the basket. <laughs> okay, so with that loft 
hydrogen and the way I threw it, the way it had a lot of wobble and it flipped up, is about 22 to 23 feet from the basket, whereas I threw the dillo correctly. So that's one great thing about these putters. They will teach you what you're doing wrong like no other disc. And if you throw them correctly, they will behave exactly as intended. And honestly, I think that's why people like these putter only rounds because they're so in instructive and informative in terms of how people's throws are. And the really high skilled players throw cleanly all the time and it really makes these discs do what your average disc golfer like myself can't do. Okay, the basket is straight ahead. You'll hear that a lot because I'll point the camera straight at the basket <laughs> all the time. And it's the closer of the two baskets. You can't really see the second one, but uh, this is a crush. I'm not gonna be able to make this in three with these two putters, given the distance. So we're just gonna go and throw this hydrogen first. There we go. That was like 65, 70% power because I didn't want to burn it over. I needed something across the street. <laughs> I'm gonna to try to put a tiny bit more power on this one just to get it farther. There we go. That actually was closer to 85%. But even that, that's probably not 200, 210, more than that. Okay, so this first throw left me about 210 away from the basket. This is closer to 170 according to UDIS. So I'm basically at the halfway point between T, pad, and basket. Okay, I've got a putt. I don't know how good though. Let me see if I can replicate that to any extent. Put a little bit more on it. It'll be interesting to see where those putters are. Okay, so this is amazing. I'm about 13 feet from the basket on this, with this Dillo. And let's see, I'm about 13 feet from the basket with this hydrogen. And I just want to point out, at no time in those throws did I feel like those were out of control, like they would sail too far or go too short. I felt a decent level of connection with them. So I think that's actually great because that means these are predictable. The way I felt they should throw is how they threw. And they landed about as good I, as I could possibly get. I'm very proud of these two discs. Keep in mind, this is a recreational level disc golf channel. I'm a rec level player. To be honest, I'm novice level if you look at like PDGA ratings. But uh, this is you know, what this channel is for. So when I'm throwing these discs, it's not to show you what a pro can do with them. There's plenty of content out there where much better players, nearly all of them that are YouTube content creators. So this is designed for what you might use one of these for as an approach or like a controlled throw. I'm 230 feet away from that basket. I'm halfway through this hole here, which on victory on the map is a 500 plus foot par four. This is, I'm at 230 now, and I'm gonna throw this armadillo first. Let's just see what I can do. So that flipped up due to a slight degree of wobble within my throw, but it didn't roll over, it didn't do anything crazy, so that's good. The spin was high enough with it to where it largely flipped up a little bit, but regained control and landed gracefully. So that was great. I did the accidental Anheuser thing. I think what I'm doing is I'm turning it. I'm doing something there when I should be throwing flat and letting go earlier. So that's probably what happened. One point I want to bring up is another reason why you throw these putters is if you have an error such as I uh, made in the last throw, um, it reduces the negative effect of that error. So like this was 88, no, 84 feet away from that basket. This controlled shot, which effectively did what I wanted is 57 feet to the basket according to UDISC. What that means is a relative small amount of variance between successful and unsuccessful shots that basically can give you a level of trust in that you've you can largely get this where you need it to or if you screw up it's not too far 
and you're not going to lose too much. So with that said, I'm actually a putt away. Uh, Anheuser with flutter, so it, it did badly. But again, that's my fault. Let's try to control this. Unfortunately, my attempt to correct for the accidental Anheuser meant that I threw with way too much hyzer. But again, novice to recreational disc golf, y'all. <laughs> okay, according to this, I'm approximately 200 feet from the basket. I'm not sure. Looks to me a tiny bit farther, but we'll see. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and throw with the Dillo. Okay, I'm very happy with that one. I felt like I threw it a little too high, but it did effectively what I was planning, so that's cool. Oh, I did the same thing. Something with my wrist. Okay, so I'm approximately 63 feet away from the basket with the shank that I had. Let's go see how far away the other disc is. Okay, so according to U-Disc, I'm 28 feet from the basket. That basically checks out. It's more like 30 from the way it looks to me. So not a lot of variance between two discs. One thrown almost exactly as planned and another one accidentally misfired. Yet they're both easy up shots to the basket, although in this case I actually have a runnable par putt. So let's go ahead and try. Let's give us a couple runs and let's try to dial in some putts because I'm actually a better putter than what I've shown so far. Oh. Okay, happy with both attempts. So this Dillo ended up just a little bit more than 20 feet <laughs> on the other side and this hydrogen one that I <laughs> obviously was a better throw, um, basically I think it looks like 15 feet out. All right, okay, I've now positioned myself on the last hole here and I'm 175 feet away from that basket and I figured this is a more interesting lie for this type of challenge than back there with that one. So my attempt is just to get across to the other side somehow with these two putters. Yes. My God, that did I hope I wasn't blocking. That did basically what I wanted. It flew over, and because it has essentially no fade, it, it helicoptered down. That was beautiful. I only hope I got that on camera. Now let's do the Dillo here. Ah, uh, a little inside. Bad mistake on my end. I threw it with a little too much hyzer. I wanted to throw it kind of flat and let it do the same thing, but that was a mistake on my part. But you know what? I'm here, and despite the bad throw, I've got a good 70 feet to the basket. Ooh, I threw that too high. That was about 80% of what I wanted. Okay, I have to say, for this loft putter, that was a fantastic drive for me to do a very high 100 and... This is like 150 feet away from where I was, so that's great. So, all right, now I've got a, uh, well, this is not the best camera work, but just imagine I'm right behind the lie. Hopefully you can see this. Stance, grip, line, rip. Ah, didn't give it enough. <laughs> I gave it too much and is right behind the other one. That's hilarious. Okay, so all things considered, this was not bad given that I basically put <laughs> a lot more power and height on it. It, it sort of helicoptered down in its own way. With that said, let's see what I can do here. There we go, nice. Okay, so let me wrap this up. What can I say about these two discs, the Hydrogen and the Dillo? Um, this, I would say is, I, I could probably, if I rip it, get slightly more distance with this than this. I do believe because it's got slightly better glide than this in the real world compared with each other. But uh, this is a touch more stable and I feel like I can quote unquote trust it more uh, for shots either in 
light winds or if I want to throw flat and have a greater chance of it fighting some turn and fading. But it's not dramatically more stable than this. It's slightly more in, in, in terms of things. This hydrogen, I think, is better as, a tr better as a training tool than the Dello in that it tells you what you're doing wrong, I think, a little bit better than this because I think this helps mask some of the problems, which is, again, one of the reasons you might want to try this. So. Uh, I'm not saying you have to necessarily bag both of these. They are almost essentially the same slot, but you may find a variance between these two, like some aspect about this you like a little bit more than this or vice versa. And uh, that's how I'd compare these two. So I like them both. Uh, I'm personally gonna be uh, uh, bagging both for my glow rounds because I like having the variability and I've only got now 13 glow discs so I, I can add, add both of them into my bag into my glow rep bag and actually that's probably why you'd want these two plastics so um, that's going to do it for this uh, comparison video between these two keep in mind I have a one speed putter throwdown coming up with all the common slash popular one speed putters of the day in one video where I'm going to compare and contrast them all it's going to be dedicated I'm going to put a lot of field work and time into it and give you a quality review and comparison so look out for that one speed putter throw down with all that said please subscribe if you haven't already as i have more interesting disc golf content on the way thank you very much for watching and have a great day